Hello and welcome to the Genealogy Corner. This is my first ever video, so I apologize in advance for any technical problems that we may experience in the next few minutes, but I hope you'll find the presentation interesting and useful. Now today, I'm going to talk to you about Spanish death certificates. If you're a genealogist or you have any interest in ordering a Spanish death certificate, you will know that certificates can provide you a mass of information which will be very useful for your personal research. Now, Spanish death certificates uh, are quite different from those in other countries such as the UK or the USA. Uh, the, um, the contents uh, that they include is very much different. Uh, the information that they contain uh, differs quite substantially from certificates in other countries, both European and overseas and uh, also how to actually access those death certificates it's quite different from other countries now today we're going to explain to you not just what information you can find in a death certificate but also how you can order one so let's begin by uh, having just a very general idea about the civil registry or the registro civil as it's called in spanish the registro civil in spain OK, uh, we're not talking about the uh, civil registry systems in Spanish speaking countries, um, for example, in Latin America. They each have their own separate system. Many of them will probably be similar to, to Spain's. In other cases, they will be very different. So only consider this presentation if you're ordering a certificate from the country that is Spain. Right, so as you can see, the Spanish uh, Registro Civil, or the Civil Registry, was created um, at a national level in 1870. Now, this is quite late uh, compared to other European countries, such as the UK, where civil registration began in 1837. Uh, it came into effect on the 1st of January 1871. In other words, if you are looking for a death certificate before that date, uh, you will have to go through other means such as church records. Okay, so even though the Registro Civil was created by law in 1870, it became effective as of January 1st, 1871. Um, one thing which is interesting, but we won't be covering it today, is a previous uh, civil registry, which existed in Spain between 1841 and 1870. It was replaced by the current, i.e. 1870-71 civil registry, but it only existed in certain uh, large cities. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we won't be covering that uh, civil registry because um, it's basically very different and not all cities have it. It's only the larger cities that had this uh, special or primitive civil registration system but something for you to bear in mind. The civil registry in its present form records all deaths which have taken place on Spanish soil since the above mentioned date. It does include foreigners or it should include foreigners, but uh, you should bear in mind that it does not include stillbirths which uh, took place before 2013. Now, as of 2013, Stillbirths are recorded in the civil in the civil registry, but uh, before that date, stillbirths were not recorded. This obviously presented a big problem uh, for families who wish to bury their stillborn children, and of course, for to have burial, uh, one usually needs to have a death certificate. And if a stillbirth was not recorded in the civil registry, then burying a child. Uh, was quite difficult. So you can imagine on top of the, having to deal with the actual bereavement and the feelings of losing a child, what the family must have gone through. Um, this also applies to children who died within the first 24 hours after birth. In other words, if a child died shortly after birth, whether it was 10 minutes or 12 hours after being born, then that death and that birth were not recorded in the civil registry. But anyway, 
Today we're going to focus on uh, the certificates which do exist, so for people who lived uh, more than 24 hours, so here we go. Um, in Spain, there is no um, civil registry uh, which is centralized at national level. Now, what does this mean? Well, in countries, for example, uh, like England and Wales, for example, you have a registry office or a registry office system where you can order um, through uh, index searches you can order any birth marriage or death which took place between 1837 and the present day in Spain it doesn't work like that not only do we not have an index at national level which is quite unfortunate because it would certainly make research much much easier but also, um, we don't have a single centralized civil registry office. In fact, the civil registry office uh, system in Spain is allocated per municipality. This is usually the case. It, not every single municipality has a civil registry office, but it is mostly the case. And bearing in mind that there are over 7,600 municipalities in Spain, you can just imagine more or less how many registry offices we have in all of Spain. Now, this is crucial uh, to understand because if you want to order the death certificate of an ancestor who lived and died in Spain, you have to know where that person died or to put it in a better way, where that person's death would have been recorded. Now this of course is a, quite a big challenge. We don't always know where our ancestors died. They may have lived somewhere but may have died when traveling somewhere or while working somewhere else. And of course uh, there is no way of knowing where that place was. Um, we can, of course, use other clues, which I won't mention today in great detail, but of course there are clues in newspapers, for example, if you can find out um, whether that person's death was recorded in a newspaper. For example, if that person died in an accident, then his or her name would have been mentioned in the article. There would, of course, be newspaper obituaries, which, of course, will record where that person passed away. And that will hopefully give you a clue as to where that person's death certificate is currently located. Now, it is sometimes a case of pure luck, and sometimes you just have to try and hope for the best. Now, if you can't find a person's death certificate, then I would suggest that you go and try alternative means. For example, do you have that person's um, complete family tree, i.e. do you know all the children that were born to that person and his or her spouse? Is it possible that they had children elsewhere and that the person that you're searching died in that other place that you weren't even contemplating? You have to sometimes think and put things, you know, on their head and, and try to see if there are alternative methods that you can apply. Going back to civil registry deaths, um, in Spain we do have what is called the Registro Civil Central, or the Central Re Registry, uh, Civil Registry, sorry. Um, but this is not, uh, as I said, there is no central registry office that covers all of Spain. What the Central Registry Office does is it records the deaths of Spaniards which took place abroad. In other words, if you're a Spanish citizen and you die abroad, you know, you die while you're on holiday or because you basically live abroad, then your death will be recorded in the consular section of the country where you're living, i.e. in the embassy or the consulate, and uh, that death uh, entry will be transferred to the central registry office, which is located in Spain's capital, Madrid. Now, this system um, works quite well for modern um, deaths, uh, i.e. deaths which have taken place fairly recently. For deaths uh, which took place 
100 years ago or 80 years ago, it does not always work. Unfortunately, because obviously of communication problems and uh, various circumstances, uh, just transferring that information and those documents to the civil registry in Madrid was simply not easy and sometimes not even possible. So you may have the right date, you might have the right place and the person's name, but you may not be able to find their death certificate in the central registry office. So you might have to go through an alternative channel and trying to see if you can find a death uh, locally in the local registry office of the country where that, that person was living and died. Now, the way of ordering a civil uh, uh, registry death certificates in Spain is quite easy. Um, it is an online service. You can also order uh, by phone, even though this is quite rare. You can sometimes order by email if you're lucky enough to find the email address of the registry office uh, where your, person, your ancestor died. But most of the time, and I would say for uh, transparency purposes as well as uh, to keep everything official and uh, basically to make things simpler for everyone involved, on, uh, ordering online is essentially the easiest. Um, now, that being said, we have to point out that this online service is not always available for all the municipalities. In other words, not all those 7,000 odd municipalities mentioned above have an online service. In other words, you might have to contact them by telephone, so you will have to do a bit of research, find the telephone number of that registry office, wherever it is, and see if you can order the, um, the, the certificate by telephone or by email or by letter. Letters have a strange habit of uh, getting lost, especially when you're ordering uh, uh, certificates in Spain. So I would just first try to establish a bit of a personal relationship with uh, the, the workers in the registry office and take it from there. Of course, language can sometimes be a barrier. And if you don't speak Spanish, then I would basically seek help from someone who does speak Spanish, because unfortunately, um, not Everyone in Spain speaks English or other languages, uh, so this might be a bit of, a, of an issue. The good news is that anyone can order a person's death certificate in Spain. You do not have to be a descendant or even a relative of the person who died. Some countries, such as the USA, at least some states I know, you have to actually prove that you are related to the, the deceased. This is not the case in Spain, and fortunately that allows just about anyone to order anyone's death certificate. If, for example, the death certificate is very recent, the registry office may well, for obvious reasons, ask, well, why are you ordering this uh, death certificate? You are not, you know, your surname is not the same as that of the deceased. You are not immediately, it's not evident that you are, um, you are related, therefore can you please explain a little bit? And usually you won't have any problems in actually getting the certificate, but sometimes they might ask you a question, well, why are you ordering this? Or, you know, what's your interest in this? And so on. And probably the best part of uh, civil registration in Spain is that, at least for the moment, um, this is 2017, this service is completely free. Now, Unlike other countries such as uh, the UK or the USA, ordering a death certificate is, um, is free. And this is very good news because it means that it's essentially limitless, the, the, the amount of certificates that you can order and have sent over to your place of residence. So that's some very good piece of news, I think. Um, just one word. Of caution, though, uh, some registry offices, because they are so small, because they are in very small towns or even villages, um, sometimes they will require you to send 
um, a stamped envelope with your address on it so they can actually send you the certificate you have ordered. But the actual issuing of the certificate in itself will be free. Now, when ordering a certificate, what do you need to provide? Well, we'll go over the different steps on how to order um, a death certificate later on. But basically, you have to provide some very basic information. And if you don't have this information, chances are you will not be able to even order the certificate, much less receive the certificate itself. Now, obviously, you will need to know the person's na name and surname, or surnames, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Now, you need to know the person's first name or first names, and also his or her surname. Now, you know in Spain that people uh, have two surnames, and if you don't, then I'll very quickly explain what that um, that implies. In Spain, people have uh, two, at least two surnames. Sometimes we have hyphenated surnames, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about having one surname and then another surname. Now, if you can think of yourself, if you speak, if you live in an English-speaking country, you will usually have one surname and uh, your parents will have the same surname if they're married. And women usually take the husband's uh, surname, at least traditionally. Nowadays, things are starting to change. In Spain, this is not the case. Women do not take the husband's uh, last name, even after marrying. In other words, you are born with a surname and you die with that surname, unless you legally change it for whatever reason. And uh, children will inherit, in the first place, the father's first surname, and in the second place, the mother's first surname. Now, we live traditionally in a patriarchal system, which means that surnames get passed on through the male line. In other words, my first surname is the first surname of my father, and he got his surname from his father, and so on and so forth. My second surname is my mother's first surname. She has two surnames as well. Her first surname comes from her father. Her second surname comes from her mother. And my maternal grandfather got his first surname from his father and his second surname from his mother and so on. If this is too complicated, I'm sure you can find a simple family tree online. You can input in Google Spanish surname inheritance or something like that, you'll be able to find how the surnames get passed on, but it's pretty simple. So, you have to know the person's name and surname or surnames. If the person was Spanish, they would have, traditionally, they would have two surnames. And why is that important? Well, essentially, you can't order a blank uh, death certificate. You have to provide a name. But more importantly, very often, the civil registry who which receives the, the death certificate uh, request, will first of all look in an index. Now, these days, some indexes are mercifully digitized, but very often they're not. In other words, they have to go through very large index volumes, very big books, and have to trawl through pages and pages of surnames. And if we're talking about a city, then of course, the, the indexes can be very extensive. Um, if you, if your ancestor, for example, had a very unusual surname, then chances are that it will be fairly easy to locate, even if you only know uh, their first surname. But if their first surname is very common, then you will need that second surname in order to allow the person who is searching for the death certificate to actually find it in the index. If you only provide a name and one surname, chances are they will not be able to find uh, the name on the index and they will simply not follow up on your request. So that's this very important information. The place of death, for the reasons that I explained before, uh, is equally important. You need to know where your ancestor lived and or rather died. And I'm giving you here in this uh, in this map on on the on the right, you can see this is a map of the province of Lugo, uh, which is in north is in northwest Spain, 
And uh, why do you need to know the place of death? Well, basically because uh, as each municipality has its own uh, registry office, you will need to know where your ancestor died or where his death was recorded. Now, Lugo is in itself a province, so you can see the whole, uh, everything which um, is not shaded grey in this picture is basically the province of Lugo. But not only that, you have the um, a, a smaller region shaded in pale pink, also called Lugo, which is basically like a, a district, let's say, of um, of Lugo. It's it's what's called a comarca, and uh, comarcas have, have these days pretty much lost their um, their legal uh, standing. They they it, it does not constitute a uh, uh, it does not have any legal weight, let's say, um, but nevertheless, it is a region within a province. So you have to bear in mind that it might, as in this case, have the same same name as the province itself. And not only that, but within that smaller region, you have a city which is also called Lugo. So there are actually three places called Lugo. You have the province, you have the comarca or the smaller region, and also you have uh, the municipality of Lugo, which will cover several parishes. Okay, one of them may well be called Lugo. You, this is quite possible, and quite often the, it is the case. So you have to know where exactly your ancestor died, because just having the information Lugo could mean that they died in uh, a different a district or even in a different municipality altogether. And even if you've got the right uh, district you may not have the right uh, municipality and therefore you will score a blank when ordering your death certificate or your ancestor's death certificate. So you have to bear in mind that the place of death is extremely, extremely important when ordering a death certificate in Spain. And last but not least, you need to know the date of death. Now, if you're ordering a death certificate from a small municipality, a small town or a village, then chances are that it will be fairly easy to locate that person's death certificate. If you give an approximate year or even a range of years, then if you're lucky and the person in the civil registry is feeling generous, they will look up, you know, a range of, you know, two years, you know, on either side, and hopefully they'll be able to find the person's death. If, however, you're ordering a death certificate from uh, from a place in Spain without actually specifying an exact date, chances are you will be unlucky in your request. Um, sometimes, and I'll explain this a little later as well, if I don't know the the exact date, but I know that, that person died, you know, in 1892, let's say, then I will specify 1892 in my request, and I will just put 01 slash 01, meaning January 1st, 1892. It's basically the easiest way of saying I don't know the exact date, but I know it's on the, it's it took place on this year or the year before the year after. So you're trying to basically explain that you don't know the, the, the exact date, but um, hopefully they'll look it up for you. So if you've got, um, even if it's an approximate date of death, then by all means include that information because it will be crucial. Uh, what they won't do, or very rarely would do, I would say, is look up a range of years beyond 10 years, you know, five years on either side. Um, they basically won't have the resources or the time or the patience to look up for death certificates. Now, what will you get? Well, this is basically what the uh, certificate will look like. Now, this is a somewhat antiquated form. Um, mod more modern forms um, <laughs> look much more boring and, and much more uh, official, let's say. They, they don't really look like um, certificates, but I've included an image of, uh, of the late 20th century death certificates because um, in most cases I think you will probably be ordering something which will look like this. Now the information that you will get in uh, modern 
death certificate will include obviously the person's name and surname or surnames, the place of death, the date of death, so there you will find out if the date that you provided is correct or not, the person's parentage, in other words the name of the father and the mother, in in, all, in the olden days, you would get the father's full name, i.e. first and second surname, together with the first name. Nowadays, you just include the first name uh, of the father and the first name of the mother. You don't get the full uh, name and surname combination, which, of course, doesn't make research easier, but at least you can confirm if that person's parents um, are the ones that you are researching. You will also find uh, the person's marital status. So in other words, it will tell you if that person uh, was married or was single or was a widower or a widow. You will also get um, the person's place and date of birth. Sometimes you will not get an exact date, but you will get the age. However, if you get the place and date of birth, that means that you can already uh, move on and order that person, the deceased's uh, birth certificate if you don't have it, which of course is very useful because not only do you need to calculate how old that person was when they died, but you have to, you, you, you can already work out where and when that person was born and with the information about the parents, you can already straight away order the birth certificate. You will also get the person's last place of residence, which uh, basically will be an address, a street number, so you can have an idea of where that person uh, lived at the time of his or her death. You'll also see the place of burial, and you will also see the name of the person who registers the death. In the olden days, the person who registered the death was usually either a relative or a neighbor. Nowadays, more often than not, is it someone uh, from the, the funeral home or maybe a doctor or someone responsible from the from the town hall very very rarely will it be um, someone who uh, who is directly related to the deceased or even even knew him okay so um, that can always lead i suppose to certain confusion or contradiction in facts but generally the information tends to be accurate now, if you have a look at uh, the image that you have on, on the right hand side, you will notice that there is a, a line which is crossed out, which is not blanked out, but it's crossed out. And that is the line for causa or cause of death. Because actually, modern Spanish death certificates do not include a cause of death. You will be surprised, and no doubt it is quite surprising, that a, a certificate of death does not actually include a cause of death. It doesn't mean that they didn't used to. In fact, in Spain, we did include cause of death until the year 1987. Um, for various legal reasons, um, it was uh, judged at the time the Ministry of Justice decided to stop including the cause of death on death certificates because uh, they judged that it did not add um, or it did not certify a person's death. In other words, it did not add any value to the civil registry's purpose to certify a person's death. What the civil registry does, and this is the argument that they give, is that they are certifying that a person died. They will identify who that person is. They will provide sufficient information to prove that you are talking about a specific individual and not somebody with the same name. In other words, they will include the information that we mentioned just now, but they will not include a cause of death. Um, this is also for privacy reasons, although it can be argued that the dead no longer have any privacy and therefore that information um, can be public. In fact, it can. Um, it, it is a rather feeble argument, but there we are. Um, and this basically means that as of 1987, I think it's the 6th of June 1987, no death certificates should be issued with a court of death. Now, this does not mean that you will not find a death certificate issued after that date 
with a cause of death, without a cause of death. Some cases you will find a cause of death still mentioned after that, but I would say it is quite rare. And certainly modern death certificates, which are filled in not by hand as they used to, as in the case that I'm showing you here, even though it's blanked out, it would have been uh, filled in by hand. Nowadays, it, they are um, registered uh, by computer and there is simply no space to include a cause of death. Therefore, there is no possibility of actually including a cause of death in a death certificate. Um, Due to this law of 1987, municipalities are supposed to uh, cross out the cause of death when issuing a death certificate. In other words, they will not delete the information from the books. If you go to a municipality and check in the civil registry office uh, the actual book, if you're lucky enough to have access to them, then you will very probably be able to read the cause of death. However, when issuing a death certificate, when issuing a copy of that uh, certificate of that entry, the worker should, in theory and legally, have to cross it out. It is worth noting, however, that in many cases, when ordering a death certificate, uh, which took place, uh, which was registered before 1987, you will still find the cause of death, and very often you will still be able to read the cause of death, even if this has been uh, crossed out or blanked out. So it is still possible to sometimes find a cause of death on an old uh, death certificate. Modern death certificates, however, do not include a cause of death. Now, older death certificates, i.e. I can't give you a specific date, but perhaps before the 1950s or 1960s when the whole system was um, brought together and uh, made more or less uniform, you could actually find um, much more detailed information than you do now, oddly enough. Um, in addition to the information that we just commented uh, on, with regards to the person's name and their parents and so on and so forth, you will actually be able to get uh, the same information plus the cause of death, as I just mentioned, the person's spouse's name, which of course is very useful because it may well add uh, an, a consort, uh, a, a, a wife or a husband uh, of whom you knew nothing. Perhaps, for example, if your ancestor, uh, your great-great-grandfather was married to your great-great-grandmother, but she predeceased him and then he remarried and you didn't know that he had a second wife, then she would also be mentioned in his uh, on his death certificate. You will also find a reference to the children's names, which of course is very useful because uh, you will get a, a list of all the the person's children. You may have missed out during your research. You may not be aware that your ancestor had more than the, the child through whom you are descended. So that is very useful information. You will also find a reference to the person's profession. Uh, very rarely is that uh, given in great detail. Sometimes you'll find labourer, sometimes you'll find an employee, but you will rarely find a uh, reference to the person's company, for example, if he was uh, a clerk in um, in, a, in a big enterprise, you will very rarely find a reference to that. Um, and last but not least, you will also find a reference if that person left a will. Sometimes this information is known and they will actually specify that, that person uh, that person left a will. If they did, then it might mention the notary or the, the the solicitor with whom uh, he or, or she wrote um, the will, uh, which of course will give you additional information as to their personal circumstances. Now we're going to move on to how to order a Spanish death certificate. Now Spanish death certificates can mainly be ordered or should mainly be ordered through the website of the Spanish Ministry of Justice. Now, I'm not providing you the actual link of the Spanish Ministry of Justice website because uh, the link tends to change every now and then, uh, or the link at least will change every now and then. So I'm just going to suggest to you that you Google 
Spanish Ministry of Justice, and then you can put um, Spanish Death Certificate or Certificado de Defunción, which you can see um, at the top of that image there, and you will be able basically to find the, the, the page that I'm showing you. And on that page, you will have to click uh, the, the line that says Por Internet. Now, the website of the Spanish Ministry of Justice is available in English, but only in a limited form. I am not 100% sure that you can order a death certificate or even any kind of certificate in um, to get the website in English, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, you can try, definitely, by changing the language at the top right-hand corner up there, where it says Castellano, you can select the language there. Um, but basically, you can follow this video to take you through the different steps. Even if it's in Spanish, you can still find your way through fairly easily. So once you click Por Internet, which is a circle there in red, you will get to the second step, which is basically clicking uh, the orange symbol, the orange arrow, which you get there, and that will take you to the Certificado de Defunción option. There is only one option because obviously you cannot order your own death certificate. There is only one option. In the cases of birth certificates, you can order up to three different uh, through three different channels. Uh, one of them being yours and being an online form, which you get immediately. Death certificates obviously do not work that way. You can only order one uh, without uh, without a digital certification, which is what it is. Once you've done that, you will have to select the region uh, where your ancestor died and the province. Now, a notion of Spanish geography will be necessary. If not, I suggest that you look up online uh, the place where your ancestor died, where that place is. Is it in, uh, as we saw before, is it in the, in the province of Lugo, but it took place in another municipality? You will have to basically find out where that person died, as I mentioned before. If, however, you're ordering the death certificate for someone who um, died abroad, a Spaniard who died abroad, their death would have been therefore registered theoretically in the Central Registry Office, you will click the second option, which you can find at the bottom of the page. After you've selected the uh, corresponding region and the corresponding province, then you will find a drop-down menu where you can select the municipality where your uh, where the death certificate you want was recorded. Um, now you will find here that not all municipalities uh, have this online system and therefore they will not appear on that drop-down menu, uh, in which case obviously you will have to go through a different means, either by phoning or by emailing or by sending a letter to that office and uh, requesting the certificate that way. But uh, generally this is um, the easiest and, and the straight, most straightforward and the standard way of ordering. And also uh, at this stage you will find that you can select the type of certificate that you want because um, civil registries basically can um, issue a certificate in in different forms. Now you can get a multilingual which will include the most essential information. It will not include all the information contained in the original document. Uh, it will include the person's name and uh, the date and their marital status etc. But it will not include that raft of um, information that you could find beforehand in, in, the, in the document that I showed you before. Okay. What I would suggest that you do is that you select the option literal, which you will find if you click on the drop down menu. Uh, I think it's the second option. And if you select the literal uh, option, you will basically get a photocopy, uh, a stamped copy, certified copy of the original document, which is what you want. It will be in Spanish. It will uh, sometimes be written uh, by hand. It may be a bit tricky to actually decipher, but um, it's it's basically uh, your biggest shot at actually getting um, the highest amount of information. So I recommend that you do that. The next step uh, is optional. Uh, you will see that you can actually include in an open text box 
uh, the, the purpose of uh, your request. Um, I usually don't specify why I'm doing that, uh, that request, uh, only if I think that uh, it is absolutely necessary, but rarely do I do so. Um, however, I do use this box to actually mention um, that the date, for example, that I'm supplying is approximate. I think even though they may not necessarily take it into consideration, I think it's always useful to specify uh, I've actually put this specific date. Actually, I'm not sure. Can you please look uh, within uh, a range of a few months or a few years if I'm not sure about the date? Uh, but basically, this is not a uh, compulsory uh, field, so you can use it more or less as uh, as uh, as logically and as um, usefully as you see fit. Um, the next a couple of fields are compulsory. You will see that they are marked with a red asterisk, um, and they relate to the person whose death certificate we are ordering. And we need to supply at least their first surname and their first uh, sorry, their, their first name and their first surname. If we know the second surname, as I said before, include it. Always, always include it. Always provide as much information as you can because it will make the, the search um, in the registry office much easier. Um, you can also include, and again, this is not compulsory, but I advise that you do include this information. You can include the first name of the father and the first name of the mother. This will um, clarify um, in cases where, for example, there um, you have an ancestor with a very common uh, name and surname. Ha providing that name will, will make it much easier for them to track. The next step, of course, uh, is compulsory. As you can see, the, the four fields are marked in a red asterisk and they relate to uh, where and when the death certificate was registered. Now, the first couple of fields you will usually not know. In fact, I very rarely do know. Um, and they relate to the book and the page uh, in that registry office where the death certificate is recorded. Now, um, more often than not, you will not have this information beforehand. But as it is a compulsory field, you just have to type in three zeros, zero, zero, zero on, on each field and, uh, and then just move on. The municipio, which is the third uh, space that you have there, basically relates to the municipality where the death took place. And this field will be automatically filled in when you have selected it at the top of the page, which we saw a couple of steps before. So you don't have to actually fill that in. It will automatically fill in for you. What you do have to include, however, is the date. The last field here where it says fecha del hecho, that basically means the date of um, when the death took place. And uh, you have to include it in the following format, uh, day, day, slash, month, month, slash, year, 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 year. In other words, uh, 01 slash 01 slash 1901, if your ancestor died on January 1st, 1901, for example. And as I said before, if you don't know when that uh, person died, you can simply put in 01 slash 01 slash the year that that person died, if you know the year. The next step basically relates to your information, so how the civil registry can contact you. And you have to include the um, your personal data, so your name and your surname, or your surnames, Spanish, your ID uh, card number or your passport number, uh, if you if you have one. Um, as you can see, this is compulsory information, so you do need to identify yourself legally. Um, and contact email address, so please double check that you put a valid uh, email address because they sometimes will contact you to say, or we haven't found it, or can you please give us more information, or whatever. They will rarely call you unless you live in Spain. Um, they will rarely call you to follow up on your request. It's more often done by email. But you do have to uh, put in a telephone number, which is the last field um, of, of the six at the top. You have to put in a contact number. And obviously, remember to put in your country code if you're 
ordering from abroad. Uh, and after that, you've got the your contact details, so your address, where you want the certificate to be sent to you by post. As I said before, this is a free service, so you will get a letter. Uh, you will get a copy of the certificate by mail. So you have to specify um, the the following information. Uh, you have to specify whether you live on a street or a road or an avenue or a boulevard or whatever. You specify that in the first line. Then the name of the street in the second line. So you would put at the top, you put street and then um, the the second line you would put, for example, I don't know, uh, Queens, if you live in Queen Street, for example, then you would put street at the top and then Queens. Then uh, you have uh, the house number, the floor number, the flat number. These last two are not compulsory. So if you don't live on a floor or on a, in a specific flat or you don't need to put that information, you don't have to. You do have to include a postal code. You have to include the city where you live, the province. This can be a state, for example, if you live in the USA or if you live in, in England, then you specify the county. And finally, you specify the country where you live. So make sure that you do include your contact details correctly. And finally, you have uh, the uh, option to choose how you want to receive the certificate. Basically, for the time being, you can only receive it by mail, as I said before, at the address that you have supplied or you can go and collect the certificate in person from the civil registry. In other words, if you live in the same place where you are ordering the certificate from, then you can just pop around and say, I will, you know, I ordered a certificate a few days ago. You will have um, proof of my order, um, show it to the person in the registry and say, you know, I want to, I want to collect it. Um, but obviously if you live abroad, then you just go for the first option. And then you can also choose how many copies of the certificate you want, whether it's one, two or three. Now, um, this is more for legal reasons. If you need to have three stamped copies, three originals, then obviously you would select the option three. But otherwise, I just make copies or I, I make scans. So I would just go for the first option, which is getting one certificate. And basically, that's it. You will uh, just revise uh, the information you put in uh, by clicking next. Uh, you will get uh, an overview of your order, but the order will still not be validated until you press the NVR button. That will effectively um, will send off your request to the registry office in question. Uh, you will also get uh, an email uh, at the address that you provided in your in your request. It will say, uh, it will give all the information that you've provided. Um, if you think that you've made a mistake, then obviously that's the time where you need to spot that error and uh, try and fix it. And basically, you just have to sit and wait. Um, there is no specific timeline um, by when you should receive um, a death certificate. Uh, very often you will receive it within uh, two to three weeks, sometimes a bit more. Pretty much depends on the workload, on the size of the registry office, on the time of year. If it's the summer, then, you know, things are likely to move a bit slower. But in general, you will receive it. If you haven't received it, of course, then what you need to do is you have to follow up. Now, I wouldn't uh, be too annoying about this. Please wait a reasonable amount of time before you actually start pestering uh, the people at the registry um, about your order. I usually wait um, somewhere in the region of two months, maybe sometimes a bit more. I just flag uh, the email that I've received in my inbox. I leave that flagged and every now and then I go through my, my inbox and I say, ah, I ordered this whatever, you know, six months ago, I haven't received anything. Maybe it's good that I, you know, pick up the phone and have a quick chat and see if they actually received it. If they, sometimes they will have sent it and the letter may have gone astray. It can happen. It does happen, unfortunately. So, you know, there's a number of circumstances which, which may account for your order 
uh, your certi the certificate not being received, uh, but you just have to be a bit patient and um, basically be a bit reasonable about, uh, about the problems that you may encounter. And that's basically it. Um, I think we've covered the most important um, parts of ordering a Spanish death certificate. Of course, there are probably a lot more circumstances that uh, you will face and which you will need help with. If that's the case, then feel free to uh, drop me a line, whether via social media or uh, via my blog. You have the address once again down there. But feel free to just contact me and I will be glad to offer you some advice and hopefully you'll be able to find your ancestors' death certificate. Best of luck and thank you for listening.